Hey Guitar Champion, what's going on? Justin Hombach here, back from my practice cave and welcome to today's video about my top 5 tips how you can play some really wide and stretchy chords. In the last couple of days there was a meme going through the guitar scene where you can see a picture where you can see Holdsworth, Alan Holdsworth, the legendary guitar player, um, is playing four E's in different op uh, octaves and different shapes and it was really with a really wide stretch in the hand and everybody was flipping out because yeah, this is really hard to play. It's not easy to play chords like Holdsworth did because he has some really stretchy chords in his playing and in his comping kind of style and his composition, so really, really interesting. And then some students and some people in my Progress Nation Facebook group are asking me how can you play such wide stretches and therefore I came up with five tips how you can train your left hand to play some wide stretches stretches and some things that you can be aware of this makes this a little easier so let's start with tip number one so first of all we need to talk about why should be doing stretchy chords well because the guitar is structured and tuned in a way where we aren't really able to play chords like on the piano where one note is coming after the next note we have the root and then the third and then the four of the fifths and the seventh and so on and so on the guitar is not really structured in this kind of way we are more based on we have like the root and then the fifths and then another root like on the bar agraf bar chord sorry on the bar chord a root fifth root and then the third the fifth and so on um, but to play some more interesting voicings and sounds um, we need to do a little bit of a stretchy thing because we have to go to the next string and there we have to really go either in the left uh, direction or in the right direction this can be a little bit stretchy so this is one reason why we should check out how we can train our left hand for those stretchy chords just to have more options how we can sound in our chord play and to play more like a piano kind of chords which are really awesome but not only for our chord play this is really helpful this is also really helpful for our soloing play if we have some arpeggios and some really interesting lines which are really stretchy here we can work on our stretches from our left hand. Please don't say your hands are too small for doing uh, stretches like this. My hands aren't the biggest as well. Um, but it's not about how big is your hand. Well, this can be advantage, of course, but it's more about what technique do you use and how aware are you of those techniques which we can use to play more stretchy, wide chords like this one here can sound really beautiful and which can be really awesome to add into your playing and to my playing and to our composition and playing and stuff like this so without further ado let me start with trick number one okay the first thing that I think it's important to be aware of is um, how our finger works with stretches and I think like this we have stretches where this one is spread out of those three where these two are spread out of those two and where the pinky is spread out oops sorry the, sp <laughs> the pinky spread out of this screw so this is really important to know because when we are aware of this we can adjust our thumb in the right direction on the back of our neck to improve those kind of stretches for example when we have a chord like this one here where the index is definitely stretched out of this group here from the middle finger the ring finger and the pinky Please take a look at where my thumb is. I hope you can see this. Let me check if it's still uh, in focus. Look where my thumb is. My thumb is on a different position on the neck when I play the chords where our index is stretched out from our middle finger, the ring finger and the pinky. Then chords like this one here, for example this. Or let's say, uh, let's, let's do this one here. This kind of chord where our pinky is stretched out of this group here my thumb I hope you can see this as well yes my thumb is way more up here on the neck and way more on this kind of area and when I again changing through uh, stretches where our index is stretched out of this group my thumb is way more low on the neck and you can summarize this as this the thumb is always in um, parallel to the groupings and not parallel to the stretched fingers so when we have the pinky stretched my thumb is here 
in this grouping. When we have the index stretched, my thumb is more in this parallel to this kind of grouping. So when you have stretched chords or problems with stretched chords, please check out which finger is stretching and where should I put my thumb? Do I have to adjust my thumb a little bit on the neck to get it a little bit more easier for our left hand and to get those kind of stretchy chords? Okay, so let's check out tip number two. Practice those chords like you've practiced your first chord. When I teach beginners chords, then I try to teach them not to play finger for finger when they are changing from one chord to the next chord. For example, when they're going from the E chord to the D chord, they're not doing something like this. Because this costs time. And I guarantee you, you will do this kind of technique and this kind of mistake as well when you're doing new and stretchy chords. When you're playing like, for example, from this chord here to this chord here. I guarantee you it will be more looking like this. For this finger, no, that finger, this finger. Okay, 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 now I can play it. A little bit out of tune, sorry for this. And then this finger, this finger, uh, that finger. So try to practice these kind of stretchy chords like back in the day when you when you practiced your E major and your D major and now I have to tune my guitar, sorry for this. <laughs> ah, the good old G string. So and how do we practice those chords? Well, like I've said in the beginning, when I start to teach beginners chords, then I let them I, I let them grab the chord and then I say okay now let loose let's shake off your hands and now try to take to grab the chord but in the midair like in front of the fret and then so that you have the shape of the chord in the air and then you can land on every on every fret in the right position and then again shake your hand and do it again so you can train your fingers to move in mid-air and to grab the kind of fingering and the shape in the air and then land on the right position. You can do this as well with stretchy chords. So for example, let me take one of my favorite, chord, favorite chords, this one here. And now I can shake my hand. And now I try to rearrange my fingers in mid-air. And now again, shake it off and rearrange them. and try to land on every fret in every position at the same time. And try to do this with all of your stretchy chords, with I would say all these nine chords. So tip number four, practice your stretchy chords like you've practiced your normal chords back in the day. Okay, let's continue with tip number three. Tip number three is really get into this kind of position, this kind of handshake. When you're looking to some photographs of Holdsworth and all those players who are playing a lot of stretchy stuff, they are not having the thump like this up here, like when you're playing this kind of chord. No, they have it like here, because, well, can you stretch your fingers when your thumb is in this position or can you stretch your fingers when your thumb is here? Can you stretch them when the thumb is here? No, not really. Can you stretch them when the thumb is down here? Yes, you can stretch them. And try to use, try to take this thumb position as well as possible, uh, as often as possible. So go away from this kind of rock and roll cliche kind of chord playing. This won't help you here when you want to uh, discover new chords. Try to have the thumb more in this position here, more down here. You can see this. Turn a little bit more, yeah. And it can really help when you have the guitar in the classical position. So this way you can get your thumb really good, bring it really good up to this point uh, of the neck, this lower point to play all those stretchy stuff. This can really help a lot. So try to experiment with the classical position. I recommend this as well to many players. Um, I love this position as well. But I also love my classical position. So try to experiment a little bit with this. Okay, tip number two. For tip number two, I only have to say to you, stop when it's hurting. I hurt my fingers a lot and got a lot of tendonitis while practicing Holdsworth stuff. 
I didn't listen to my body. I didn't stop when my fingers are telling me, Justine, this hurts, this hurts, stop, stop. I didn't listen to it. I keep practicing and this isn't the right way. When it's hurting, stop. Make a little break, do some massage on the fingers and try to relax them and this is really helpful. So stop when it's hurting. Definitely stop there, stop there. What you can do to prevent this is do some stretches for your arms. Do something like this or this. Well, what I also do, which I've learned from a classical piano player, I hope you can see this, let me check, yes. I do stretching like this, do my fingers between my legs and try to make some stretches. Mm, this is really awesome, this helps a lot. And you can do those kind of stretches also uh, when you are warming up or when you are, in, I don't know, in the office or in the school or in the subway and don't have to do anything and it doesn't look that stupid. Or does this look stupid? No, not really. So it's totally fine to do this one in public. It doesn't look that stupid like my other warm-up routine, which is this one. Or this one. Okay, now let's continue to trick number one. Tip number one is try to be musical behind this. So what I mean with this is learn and listen to songs and to chord voicings and to stuff like this uh, in a musical situation. For example, which really helps me to achieve some wider stretches or the feeling for wider stretch is to learn songs where these kind of stretches are in. Uh, for example, that of Holdsworth stuff. There's a song called White Line, which has a really, really awesome midsection. And there we have all of those. Let me see if I get this one right. You have all of those kind of finger rings. This one. Oh, I love that song. And you see how I hold my guitar? <laughs> so you can see uh, this comes from the classical position and this helped me a lot to play songs like White Line. So yeah, go to check out songs where are some stretches in this, like uh, Alan Holdsworth, a lot of Alan Holdsworth stuff. If you aren't that much into this kind of fusion thing which Holdsworth is doing, but I would recommend everybody to check out Holdsworth, he was genius. Um, and if you are maybe, for example, more on the metal scene, the progressive genty metal scene, then check out Periphery. Periphery has some really awesome riffs where they're combining stretchy chords inside of really interesting riffing and arpeggios and stuff like this. Um, especially all the stuff that Mark Holcomb was, uh, has written for Periphery. It really, can be really stretchy. Um, some Paul Gilbert stuff is stretchy when you are more into the shreddy kind of scene. It's a little bit more stretchy for lines and soloing, not that much into chords, but also really, really helpful to play this kind of stretchy stuff to get used to those kind of shapes and stretches and the stretch between this one and between this one and stuff like this. All of of those helps to um, train your fingers for some wider stretches. So I hope you liked this little video about my top five tips so you can train your left hand to play some wider stretches. If you like this video then feel free to subscribe, feel free to comment and feel free to hit the like button. All right I hope I'm going to see you in my next video. So far cheers and stay progress.